All right, I will call this uh, meeting to order at 4.06. Um, I want to welcome all the different centers that are joining us for the first time. And let's uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. Hey, uh, Item uh, 1.2 is uh, adopt the agenda. Are there any alterations to the agenda? I, I'd like to make a change uh, under uh, action items, moving 5.1 and 5.2 to after 5.6. 5.6, I don't have a 5.6. Five point six is uh, approval of IRS mileage. Um, is there a second? I'll, I second the motion. All right. Um, just for clarification, um, as you may notice, our fearless director is uh, not with us yet she's had the, the distinct pleasure of performing her civic duty um, as a member of a jury and so she will not be dismissed until uh, 4 30 and her anticipated arrival will be approximately 4 45 and we're just buying some time to have her input on um, some important items, while although everything is important. Uh, so, having said that, uh, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Bianca? Aye. Rosemary? Aye. And I also approve. Uh, motion uh, on the agenda is adopted as amended. All right, moving on to number two, student presentation. Uh, Kurt? Yes. We have today with us Hazen Dunn, and he is Andrea's student. He's in fifth grade and he would like to uh, make a presentation to the board this evening. You wanna stand up? Thanks for being here, Hazen. My name is Hazen Dunn and I'm 11 years old. One second, can you guys, can y'all hear Hazen? Let him try again, he was starting to introduce himself. Just a little louder. My name is Hazen Dunn and I'm 11 and this this is my first year at Northern United Charter School. Um, I really like this school other than like other schools I've been to because it's more like hands-on. It We learn and we're not just sitting in our seat all day, but we learn in a fun way and it makes it easier for us to learn when we're just not sitting at a desk all day. And I'm kind of looking forward to, because I know it's in sixth grade, but I want to, like, in science, learn about magnets. I don't know why, I just always love magnets. And in October, my dog, Thor, he passed away. And I came to school on Monday, and everybody was just loving and caring and welcoming 
I just really appreciate that. Well, thank you for sharing. Is there something special that you guys have been learning lately that you'd like to tell us about? Yeah, we've been working on writing our own like fantasy sort story, and I really I like it because in other schools we'd have to write about something certain, but in the school we kind of just get to write about well not er anything we want, but we get to write about what's appropriate for school, <laughs> but we get to be more like hands on with our writing. Even more yeah. Do y'all have any questions or feedback for Hazen? I want to thank you for coming and speaking to us. Sometimes when you speak to a group of people, especially adults, that can be kind of nerve wracking, but you've done a good job and you convey what's going on over there so well. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Hazel. Thanks, Hazel. Thank you. Kurt? Yes. Uh, That's it. Is, does that conclude that your um, student uh, presentation? Yes. Yes. All right. Well, thank you. Hayden, you did a very good job. We appreciate it very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Okay, uh, moving on to the consent agenda. Uh, 3.1, consideration of approval of warrants and payroll for NU Humboldt Charter School. 3.2 is consideration of, of approval of warrants and payroll for NU Siskiyou Charter School. 3.3, consideration of approval of minutes for the December 10th board meeting. 3.4, consideration of resignations, hires, leaves, and change of assignments. 3.5, consideration of approval of Williams Uniform Complaint Quarterly Report for NUHCS 3.6 Consideration of Approval of Williams Uniform Complaint Quarterly Report for NUSCS. Are there any uh, corrections or additions to the consent agenda? I have a comment. All right. Under the um, uh, resignations hires 3.4, uh, would it benefit us and make it easier on Linda if she had uh, another column for the beginning uh, date and when the leave is to end so that she's not having to put it on the consent uh, calendar every single time? So that we would know, for instance, Travis, his first day was the 23rd of November and his expected uh, end date or return date would be June 15th or whatever. Okay. Would that help you so that you're not always adding it? Um, well, it depends because with the family leave or whatever, they're allowed a certain amount. It right. doesn't have to be consecutive. So exactly. They can back a week and then go back mm -hmm. away for another mm -hmm. week. Right. So, it's just that the, the block that they have, mm -hmm. the number of days. Anyway, I just thought that that might help at your end and then it might help at us so that we know, oh, well, he's going to be out six or eight weeks. Mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. I mean, they have that for you guys. What do you think? Um, it doesn't bother me either way. And, and it's not a bother to me. It's just, I know last month we talked about it. This is when we just pick it up until they return. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was my only comment. Okay. 
Okay. That's yeah, not necessarily a change. No, no. Um, Bianca, do you have anything to add? Um, I do not. I guess I will make you aware that I did inquire, um, since it's under warrants and payroll, I did inquire with um, Tammy, and now I've involved Kirk and Vivian to find out about the way in which we pay the power bill for the Pine Grove Learning Center. Um, as y'all probably remember, the Pine Grove Learning Center uh, shares the space with the theater. And it occurred to me that this past year that the, the theater has started their classes and they also hold events in the evening. And so I was just curious if it was a percentage or if it was a solid rate I couldn't easily discern from from this packet. Um, so I've just inquired because I want to make sure that if it is a percentage or whatever the rate may be, that we're not being charged more because of the other activities that are going on there. Um, and so I just let you know that that to my fellow board members that that is going on uh, between me and some of the staff. Okay, well, thank you. I believe Tammy has uh, something to say uh, concerning that. So I sent you an email. I'm still researching it, but the Alder Street, since we have 100% of that property, we have to pay all bills for that property. Right. With the Wendy James property, I believe that's separate. Huh? I can Pine speak Grove. to that. Huh? I said I can speak to that. Um, okay. Alder Street that we um, at the beginning of the year and I, th I thought we talked about it at the board meeting but we knowing that that was the case and it was difficult for Wendy at times to split out the bill she just figured an average of what we had paid okay um, over the course of the two years that mm -hmm. we were there mm -hmm. and she raised our rent that amount and then she just handles all the power and all the propane for the main building okay. at, at, the, at that location. The only thing we pay for at that location is the kerosene to heat the small little acorn house. Okay. The rest is all, um, just all the utilities, other utilities are included in our rent. Okay. And, and that, that's this, this summer. Right, and that's based on our usage from the previous years, not, okay. Two years, yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. we, we looked at all the bills and averaged them out and just figured out a fair right. um, a, amount to raise the monthly rent. Okay. Perfect. Okay, thank you, Kurt. So, like also, also in the lease, it does say if we start using more electricity, that she does have the right to go ahead and increase it. So, um, if our utilities go up, like in the lease, it straight says that we need to use minimal amount of electricity in anything else that could go up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank you very much. Is there, are there any other comments uh, pertaining to uh, items in the consent agenda? I don't have any. All right. Um, I will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as posted. I'll make a motion. Go ahead. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as posted. <clears throat> There a second? I'll second that. All right, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Bianca. Aye. Rosemary. Aye. I also approve. Consent, to, consent, consent <laughs> agenda approved as posted. <laughs> Good job. All right, um, item number four, public comments on items not on the agenda. Under this item, the public is invited to address the board regarding items that are not on today's agenda. Please keep your comments concise, brief, and limited to three minutes. The board is not allowed under the law to take action on matters that are not on the, the agenda. Should comments from the public pertain to a charge or complaint against an employee of Northern United Humboldt Charter School or Northern United Siskiyou Charter School, the board encourages the speaker to utilize the school's written complaint procedures to pursue the matter. The public will have an opportunity, however, 
to comment on all agenda items as those items are heard uh, today. There are any public comments? No? All right, well, uh, moving on then. Um, number five, action items to be considered. Um, because we've uh, made the adjustment, um, how should we just rearrange the order or? I would just start with 5.3. All right, I just want to make sure it's be confusing. So, 5.3 approval of the Cut and Ridgewood School Lunch Program contract. <laughs> Do you want me to speak to that a little bit? Um, I was trying to find all the. And we, can, I can speak to it too as a as a teacher with high school students from a different point of view. <laughs> well, um, I, either way, uh, it's the. Uh, Food service agreement mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, for the 2000. 20, 2020. Where's any any background noise? Uh, uh, if you can, you mute your microphone. Uh, something. Somehow or another, somebody does not have their microphone muted and because it's us. <laughs> okay, so uh, From the other another day. technological uh, issue, you know, any, any background noise, uh, mm -hmm. conversations that is picked up and um, becomes um, uh, annoyance. The word nuisance <laughs> or annoying, um, and you know, any, any private conversations going on in the background, uh, it's, it's actually a distraction. So, uh, that if I all possible, you know, sure. we can uh, eliminate Sorry. those, uh, those occurrences. Uh, <clears throat> I would greatly appreciate it. So, um, um, who would like to address the uh, cutting? Go ahead. You want to um, speak to So, it as that? you know, we were getting our lunches from Jefferson Community Center, yeah. and that we were going to switch over to the Cutting School District. Well, that started on Monday. Mm -hmm. So, this is just the nuts and bolts, the contract of what it's going to cost and what we're doing. And Julie might want to speak to how well it's going, but we're in day four of this week and I noticed that in the one meal that I saw what a what an improvement from the other one. Um but improvement I think, in my well when it was hot um it seems like there's more choices for the students so they can either get a vegetarian one or they can get like the day that I saw was chicken strips, carrots, tomatoes, uh milk and a banana so they had fruit vegetables and a protein with the milk and it came all individually wrapped on a plate and none of the food looked old everything looked fresh so um that wasn't the case with the one meal that i kind of uh, sampled from jefferson so that was just my opinion, but Julie, Julie? has had four days of it. No, um, our, <laughs> our kids are feeling, in fact, I wrote to, it's Jennifer Johnson who's in charge of the meal program over there. Um, I wrote to her to ask her about the federal guidelines in regards to portion sizes. That was my question. Because our kids are hungry when they're done. They were not hungry when they were done with Jefferson. Right. Um, our kids don't are not getting enough food. Um, the portion sizes seem to be that of a of a um, elementary school, 
um, number one. And number two, we feel that the food is way junkier, um, a lot more white bread, a lot more, um, there is fruit, but our fruit, which was kiwi the other day, the bags were full, full of ants. So all of our kiwi had ants in it. So I wrote about that today. Um, so our experience, the kids like the fact that it's some warm stuff that is coming, but our kids are leaving hungry. So I'm really concerned more or less about the guidelines. And I'm wondering, this is my wonder, are they making up portion sizes because the food is junkier and it's calorie count? So we're getting calorie count in less food. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to figure this out with um, them because our kids are not um, as happy with this program as they were. They like the warm. They like the fact that there is some choice in the matter, but they, every one of them is saying, I'm really hungry. Can we get more food? So, yeah. Can we get to ask so what was happened with us is we're actually ordering the PB and J's and you can freeze the PB and J's. It's legal to do that and keep them frozen so that kids that are still hungry can have a PB and J in the afternoon too if they're on the free and reduce is what we're doing because we don't want our kids to be hungry. Right. So um uh, is Sherry aware of this? I actually included Sherry in the email today okay. um, because this was the first that I heard about the ants and the kiwi, which happened yesterday. And I went in today and I looked at the food and um, I've been looking at the food and the quality and the bread. And, and when you think about Jefferson made bread homemade, of course it was more hearty. Then when you look at their hamburger bun, that looks like it's directly out of a, you know, a package, so to speak. So we're having a little different of, um, and I'm going to talk a little bit more with Sherry when I find out more about the portion sizes and stuff. I would be interested in having some follow-up with that. Uh, in the past, I know that there were three tiers, so to speak, elementary, uh, middle. middle and then high school as far as the portions. Yeah, so I think the first day, um, and I can't remember exactly, but in fact, Jennifer Johnson herself over there said, maybe we'll send a few more carrots because, well, a carrot for God's sake, they don't want a carrot, they want like more of the entree. Yeah. Because, you know, there was like two carrots or something like, I don't remember what it was, I'm kind of exaggerating, but the point being overall story, our experience thus far is that the kids kind of like the food, but they're not getting enough. Mm -hmm. So there it is. And my next question. Okay. And the ants are free. And the ants are free. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I should have said to them when they brought me the ants. There's more protein in there for you, baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my question has to do with. Um, Number three on the contract, the type A and adult lunches. Are they one and the same as far as price goes? Is it the same for a student and an adult? Well, depending upon, well, let me just speak to this. So obviously we have students that are free and we do. Right, right, right. But, but yes, an adult pays the same price. As a student yes. that pays full yes. price. Yes. yes. Okay. We're charging them whatever it costs for us. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot about that. There was. And that might be a future agenda item for next time is the follow up on this. Okay. I'm sure that there'll be funds to work out. This is the We've got it. Well, that's true. That's true. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> just. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> Very good. <Lydia. laughs> No, I'm just blown away at the um, difference of opinion. That, that's really wild. Yeah, so um, uh, 
Tammy and Linda, is there um, uh, a necessity uh, or a, um, uh, a time deadline to approve this um, uh, lunch program contract? Did Sherry already sign it? Yeah, Sherry already signed it. I know, but the board has the I know, but the board has not officially approved it. Um, I think that she was comfortable enough to sign it that all of us could be worked out and um, we could move forward with them. The cost savings is substantial yep. going through Cutton versus Jefferson. I think that I'll just continue my conversation with Jennifer. Um, I think that, you know, there could be the, the aspect of her not realizing you know that I mean, not putting two and two together that we are a high school. That's right. She's very used to serving. They're very used to serving this elementary kids. Right. No, not Jennifer Johnson. Yeah, yeah. I know there's so, so many. Of them. Yeah. yeah, no, not from Eureka. Um, but yeah. anyway, um, so I, I'll give, I'll let you know if you guys are interested in knowing what my conversation with her how it goes. I'll well, let you know. absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, I. Personally, I'm, uh, while there appears to be confidence in working out the um, issues, I don't say about it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the issues uh, uh, here with the, the, the diversity of, uh, you know, the input, I mean, obviously, something is just not right. Um, uh, and because Sherry already signed it, you know, it's all, it's in the hopes of that it will work out. And it sounds like, as you said, Linda, I mean, and I mean, savings the, the savings is substantial. And, you know, that's, that's a huge consideration. But, at what expense? <laughs> um, you know, we had negative feedback on Jefferson the first week too. So I, I mean, I think at this point it's probably too early to tell. Yeah, they might not right. realize. I mean, there's so many moving parts right. of right. this that it might be too soon to negate everything mm -hmm. just for the first four days of service. So That's why I wrote him today. Let's yeah. let let's see what she says because I think. Our biggest complaint is the portion size. portion size. I mean, anything can happen. I doubt we'll get another bug infested. It, well, it wasn't infested. That's a little more than that. But um, I think that if we just give them a chance, then we'll be able to see if the portion sizes mm -hmm. do increase. And um, I know that calories play a part in the meal prep and correct. planning and whatnot. But um, like your basic sandwich, two pieces of bread, Correct. Middle school would get three. High school would get yeah. another. And see, yeah, and that's three. not, and they got two tiny little mm -hmm. chicken. So anyway, enough yeah. said. Let me just go ahead with my conversation with Jennifer. But Sherry, she, he, yeah. I saw your email. Yeah. Portion sizes. Yeah. We're having some problems with our kids are still hungry. Well, you know, it's interesting. You may have already said this. I'm sorry to jump in. I no, no, I'm glad that, I'm glad that uh, you've come. Uh, as this uh, juncture, right? Well, yeah. you know, um, Cotton School District has made lunches for elementary age Correct. kids. And so, um, in speaking with them about the requirements for high school and, you know, what all needed to be served for high school, she said she was going to look into that. And I'm not sure if she ever made arrangements for it. And then no, today I, I sent the email, which right. I included you on, because right. the kids, that's when yeah. we met, we had that. Okay. Beforehand. So okay. she'll she'll make it right, I have no doubt. But you know, I do I do want to say um, I just know from experience from dealing with cafeteria programs before that what you think is an appropriate serving size is not. You know, it's one piece of bread. It's not two for a sandwich. So every time you get two pieces of bread, you're actually doubling the amount that you're supposed right. to give. Um, and so it may be that that is correct, but we'll find out. 
will definitely find well, out. If, if it's giving, not, she'll make it right. If they're giving will. the same amount to the little kids. So well, we'll kindergarten. Well, no, but that's what we were doing for Jefferson. We were giving the high school amount for to the kindergarten. This is that, that they were never hungry. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Anyway, we'll wait yeah. and see. We'll, we'll wait and see. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, the, the, the key uh, word that I heard come out, uh, come from Sherry, was she's confident that uh, children, uh, that they'll make it right. And um, that, coupled with the fact that she's already signed the contract. So, um, is there any other uh, comment or questions of Sherry? Now, pertaining to um, the uh, lunch program contract. Hi, Bianca. Hi, Sherry. No, I don't think I have any. <laughs> um, there's a cancellation clause in it, but it says that you know if if you're confident that she's going to make it right, then I feel good about it because the council the cancellation clause says 90 days. That's a long time for students to be unhappy about. What, or hungry rather, uh, but if you're confident, then I'm confident. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the Cutting Ridgewood School Lunch Program contract. Is there a second? I second the motion. I second it. Hi, Bianca. <laughs> Aye. Uh, Rosemary? Aye. And I also approve. Uh, motion carries. Um, 5.4, certification of Northern United Siski Charter School's first interim budget. No, it was in your hand. I know you have hard copies. This is. Oh, we're just. Another on the aisle. No, they moved it. Okay. Yeah, we'll see. We're, okay. It's okay. like. Yep. Sorry. That's okay. Yep. I thought we were jumping back. Yeah. Uh, no, we'll just continue down. Bianca, can you open up page two of your first interim? I can. I am. Okay. So I want to point this out for you guys. The original budget is budget adopted. I'm talking about column A. Column A is budget adoption. Column B on here would be first interim. And if you notice that budget adoption matches first interim, and in my eyes, that's incorrect. You can't, that can't be a true statement. Like, I know I've hired employees since then, so like my certificated salary hasn't changed. What I've done on the report, instead of saying first interim, I said first interim um, projections for the whole year, because that's more true work, um, numbers that you guys are looking at instead of a copy of. So I took the uh, projected year total from column D. Yep. And on this report, I think you guys remember, yeah, it's like that. Okay, so um, in our revenues, we have gotten money. Like six hundred and forty thousand. But in our expenditure, we have spent three hundred and twenty-four. But the revenue increase covers the expenditure. Um, there is nothing out of the ordinary for me to explain. It's just a month late. So in in uh, so far, any uh, and or some slight change that um, has caught your attention? 
This is like one of my first ones as far as like, why would you copy your budget option over to your budget? Um, other things we got in there is I need to get on the grant and find out just how much more we have to spend on this <laughs> because I know last quarter I put in for 252,000 and this quarter I'm working on this QER now and it's going to be high so we're going to yeah, Kirk and I met with um, Siskiyou County Office of Ed staff this week, earlier this week, and we determined that Siskiyou has spent all their grant money at this point. Um, so I think we're just going to have to just fine tune it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think Siskiyou's done with their grant money, and which, um, you know, we were a little worried about Siskiyou being able to spend that much money because it's so much smaller, uh -huh. you know. Uh, but you guys did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good shopping, Kirk. Good shopping over there. <laughs> so, uh, Tammy, what's your recommendation? Uh, possibly. Okay. Um, all three years, we're, we're fine with money. So, uh, Bianca, do you have any uh, question, comment? I don't. Thank you, Tammy. You're welcome. And yeah, Thank you. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and you, you know, I don't know if I showed you know paid attention, but last time I was telling you on here, Lacey is the one that put the logos on the backpack. Oh no! Oh. Good for Lacey. Good for the team. The team. Go team. Go. Yeah, that's right. All right. Um, is there a motion? Love it. Yes. Um, I'll make a motion to certify the uh, Northern United Siskiyou yeah. Charter first interim budget as positive. I second There's the motion. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Bianca? Aye. Mary? Aye. I also approve. Uh, motion carries. Uh, 5.5 approval of the Wairika Learning Center field trip to Southern Oregon University. Um, Kurt, do you want to say anything about this? Um, I really uh, I don't have any further information. Okay. Staff at uh, Wayward Learning Center is taking students to tour Southern Oregon University to check it out. Um, and, you know, on the agenda, it talks about where they're stopping. Um, they're including an Rock and Ashland. And you guys know that for out of county and overnights, that those require board approval. Oh, yes. So this is not an overnight, but it's an out of county as it's out of state. I like to see school bands. Yeah. So, yeah. Good. All right. Um, any comment or questions, uh, Bianca? No, I think it's it's great that they're going up there, and I love the fact that they're going to use you know since they're already spending the gas to get up there that they're going to uh, throw in some art. So I'm excited for them. Good. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, Wairika Learning Center field trip to SOU. <laughs> is there a second? I'll second it. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Bianca? Aye. Rosemary? Aye. I also approve. Uh, motion carries. 5.6, approval of IRS mileage rates for 2020. So you guys know, I know, do you say 2020 or do you say 2020? I say 2020. But Barbara? <laughs> yes, 20 seconds, 2020. Um, so you guys know the federal government sets the IRS mileage rate every January for the calendar year which is always kind of a pain for schools because we um, 
don't run on the calendar year, we run on a school year, and so which means that if we make the change in January, then it's like halfway through we change forms and mileage reimbursement. And if they get paid prior to the 58 cent, we have to go back. Right, and fix it. Right. So um, we um, have already, uh, I think Kirk has already updated the mileage forms. Um, I'm not. If you can give me a thumbs up, it's already on the website. I'm not 100% sure, but I actually have one I need to fill out now. No thumbs. January. No thumbs up. <laughs> um, but anyway, so the rate has gone down a little bit. It was 58 cents, now it's 0.575. Oh. Okay. Um, Guessing because the cost of gas has gone down, maybe? Yeah. Right. Everywhere. Uh, <laughs> <I'm all county. laughs> uh, um, it is what it is. Um, yeah. Any any comment, uh, Bianca? No, I'm not going to make comment on federal. <laughs> no, no comment. No comment. Oh, but I will say I didn't get. Um, Kirk has since shared it with me, but I didn't receive the new agenda and packet that included 5.6, just for future. <laughs> uh, Okay, well, I don't know mine. Uh, all right, um, uh, your. Uh, I'll, I'll check the last your, email from Lacey and forward it to you. Okay, no, Kirk shared it with me, but just for future. I'm not sure if it was like a new SCS. Okay. Um, you know, I don't know what happened there, but just throwing it out there. Uh, yeah, yeah, she said, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, anyway, comment. Uh, well noted. Thank you. I don't know why we have to approve it because they tell us. Yeah. I know. <laughs> That's how a lot of things are though, Rosemary. <laughs> they just want to know your team plan. There we go. Okay, I'm entertaining a motion to approve. I'll make a motion oh. to approve the new mileage rates for 2020. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Bianca? Aye. Rosemary? Aye. I also approve. Motion carries. Okay. Moving back to 5.1. Approval of the Northern United Humboldt Charter School Independent Auditor's Report. Um, and you already had copies of, of them in your packet, but these are just the hard copies that they get. So that one is humble and they're sister. So. And then Bianca, when I came over there this week, I brought yours. So hopefully you have your hard copies. I do, I do. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Um. Very good. Uh, yeah, I'm mean, uh, here. Hi, Danny. Danny. This is my first time reporting on the uh, audit findings, but this is also our first year. So, um, humble audit finding: the EL student was redesignated, but was not updated in the Cal uh, Cal Okay. Okay. I mean that, yeah. that's it. So. Um, then there's a cost. The audit cost was sixteen hundred. Yeah. And then so our corrective is going to be that the CalPads coordinator updates CalPads, and in the future we'll make sure that both systems match. So that one. Can I ask a question? Yeah. I thought that when there was a discrepancy, CalPads alerted the site <laughs> person. She works. Sorry, <laughs> they're not all that great. <laughs> the site person or CalPads? Because I think the site person is pretty <laughs> right. <laughs> um, what happened <coughs> one is that I upload all the files from our student information system into CalPads. Mm -hmm. And then there's a two part process there's submission errors that we hope will get all mistakes, like the one that we got uh -huh. as a finding. And then there's the certification error. 
part. So it's a two-step process, and for whatever reason, we got redesignated. The student got redesignated after I did my upload, and so it never got into CalPads from that upload, or CalPads didn't catch it. Right. You know, as it just kept it, the student as an EL and didn't catch the redesignation as we did it. So there's a couple hows it could have yeah. done, yeah. but we just went in and changed it as soon as we found out that so, it needed to be updated. <laughs> so it, once it comes to you in the program, that's where. Um, it's supposed to be caught now what happens versus this, this individual submitting it? No, what happened is he, this student was already an EL student, been an EL student. So right. CalPads have him listed as an EL student. Right. We in our system have him, it's, right. it's right. CalPads have him as an EL student. He was tested again and then redesignated as fluent, English fluent. Okay. So that update was made in our student information system. Right. But wasn't it wasn't then fixed afterwards in the count pads. Like it was still he was still EL when the upload happened. So that was a match. There was no error. Right. But then he was redesignated, it was changed in our system, but we didn't re-upload it or you know it was after we'd already done the upload in the count pads. So um, what steps are being taken to avoid that issue right. in the and, future? Well and so what um, what I wrote in the corrective action is that each year the CalCAPS coordinator will review the English learner status of all students to ensure that they're accurately reflected in the school information system and CalCAPS. So like what Lynn and I did is we found a report in school pathways that shows all the EL students and all the redesignated students, and then we found it in CalPads and can now compare them each. And that needs to happen like between the time of the original upload and the final submission window. You know, there, there's a there's a window where you do your upload at first, but it's not finalized for, do they give you a month? About, yeah, about a month. And it's all based on the first Wednesday in October. Like all the college ads thing is all off of October 2nd, plus this year's. And so all the information of students who have enrolled on or before that deadline, those are the ones we have to go back through and make sure that every down to how their last names or middle names are spelled is correct in both systems. And so we've actually now done that because that's the time frame we're in right now is that the opportunity to make corrections. Um, and so we actually already did it for this year. So next year when we're audited, if those two things should match. Yeah. Okay, that's um yeah, a uh, good explanation. I know. I don't do. <laughs> um, you know those changes, and you know all those things can be. <laughs> and you know, I don't get ordered if a student's been redesignated. Right. I'd have to go in and look to see. It's not like anyone writes and says, yeah, "Oh, yeah. Johnny was yeah, redesignated right. on this date." Right. To give me a heads up to go into CalPass. But that certainly can be changed. I was right. going to say, we're well, yes. the EL, yeah. EL coordinator. There's no reason why she couldn't. Right. Because she, right. that, this is like the time right now. There's somebody mm -hmm. that she has to test right now. Right. Um, and then yeah. she's already done the testing for the fall people. Right. So if there were, if there was anybody that was redesignated in this fall window, you know, in the fall time period, in that initial test. Um, she, yeah. After all, you know, you know it's sixteen hundred dollars. Yeah, it was a hit. Yeah, and that, so. So, and what that means is the state paid us for an EL student. You get additional funds for EL students mm -hmm. that they shouldn't have. And so, the sixteen hundred dollars is the amount, you know, the time period in which that was wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, from the date he was actually redesignated to the end of the year. That's, that's what that's yeah. Yes. Any, anything else, Tammy? Mm -hmm. No, that. That yeah. was for humble. Okay. So that was the one finding. Okay. The okay. Yes. Um, in looking through, um, uh, you know, the information here, um, the supplementary information. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody would know this. Uh, I believe it's an error. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. any financial issues. 
but it's uh, Northern United Humble Charter. It's on page 23. Or, uh, uh, it's talking about the organization, mm -hmm. the governing board. Uh -huh. uh, I'm listed as the chairperson, and when my uh, term expires, Bianca is listed as the vice chair. Mm -hmm. Then they list Brianna. Because she was board member last year. Yeah, because he signed it up. Oh. I interpreted it as last okay. year. Yeah. 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 Okay. See, and so only Jennifer had resigned. Okay. That right. I, I, I made a mistake. I stand corrected. But, you know, future, um, and I went back and checked my uh, emails uh, just for future reference. Uh, September 10th. Is. is when she said to me in an email. Brianna. Yeah. That. That, yeah, you need yeah. to make yeah. it up, Linda. <laughs> Put that next. That I have to resign. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So September 10th, 2019. 19, yeah. Mm. Okay, that's right. I was so. Really? 19? That was this fall. Yes. yes. So no, a long time but ago. she had missed okay. some okay. prior to okay. that. Right. Okay. August and September. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. That seems like so long. <laughs> she hasn't been in a meeting a long time ago. Right? Uh, right. Since she well, she resigned. I was going to say. Not yeah. See, that adds to this whole June and like, then the Twilight Zone thing of 2020. Yeah. I think you tried asking me for older than air. It's been a long June. time. Yeah. June. Anyway, um, my mistake, my bad. Um, Bianca, do you have any uh, comments about uh, Humboldt's audit report? No, I appreciate the further explanation. All right. Um, so, is there a, a motion to approve the auditor's report? I'll make a motion to approve uh, the auditor's report for uh, NU Humboldt. I second the motion. Second? Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Bianca? Aye. Rosemary? Aye. I also approve. Motion carries. All right, Bite one two, approval of the Northern United Siskiyou Charter School Independent Auditor's Report. Okay, this audit finding didn't cost us anything. It was just a fact, and we've got to make sure we don't do this again. But the finding was use of this certificate. Yes. Purchase of a purchase. Yes. And all staff will be notified that purchasing gift cards and gift certificates is considered an unallowable expense and is considered a gift of public funds and will not be reimbursed or paid by the charter school. Now, I did go in and look, because it was Amy that had done it, and there were movie tickets. It's just how it came. I mean, I don't know if we, I know it's too late now, but I believe no, it was it's movie okay. tickets. It's just, yeah, gifts for a movie theater. Yeah, yeah, she took kids to the movie, and I think that's what happened. But that's I don't know, that even if I Prove that to award. Yeah, it's a PBIS. Yeah. So. Well, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't it's matter. He can't, he can't do any kind of gifts or gifts because they'll consider the cash. If you dropped it, if somebody picked it up, anybody could use it. That's what it is. It's a movie. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Gifts are gifts. Gifts are gifts. So she would have had to say, I'm paying for tickets. Yeah. 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 Amy has taken a group of kids to the to the movies. What makes that different than taking a group of kids skating? It was a field trip because it was a she bought gift cards. Gift so cards for each student. Yeah, gift cards. Oh, so they didn't go as a group. Is, even if they did, it's the purchase of a oh, gift card, card, card is an issue because what the auditor said is it's considered cash. And so if, if you draw it, right. you lost it. Anybody can pick it up and use it. Okay. It, doesn't, it doesn't matter where the place is because that was that was my misunderstanding. I knew that you couldn't buy gift cards for certain things, mm -hmm. but my my rationale was or my thought process, and I had a discussion with the auditor about this is 
I always thought if you were buying a gift card for a place where you knew for sure what they were purchasing was an allowable purchase. In other words, I knew you couldn't get a gift card for, like, say, Costco, because someone could use it to buy alcohol. Exactly. So, if, but if you were buying a gift card for something that was, you know that they can only buy them, right. And he said, no, he's, that's not the issue. The issue is that it's just like cash. And we, we, we did have a school district that did that in full. And county said that is allowable as long as she's getting a receipt for every time they're using the card saying what they're buying. It's only for electronics. So I think that would work. Maybe that's, maybe that's why I have that in my head. But um, the other thing that, cause, because we had, what, another thing that we have done, and he just didn't come across it, was we have purchased gift cards for gas. Yes. Yeah. And Absolutely. so we specifically asked about that, mm -hmm. and, he, and then he said no. He said what you have to be doing is doing having parents do mileage reimbursements just like you would a staff member, filling out the mileage forms. Because you only can be paying for gas for them to be going to and from school. You can't like because we had also been doing our rental car and we had to have a family and you know giving them gas like right here at the gas pump and they said how do you know they're not using it for other places? So that's why you have to do a mileage reimbursement. So then it's okay to do the mileage reimbursement for someone that is not a staff person. We yes, have, we have, <laughs> and we had that conversation. We had a conversation about that too. We thought we said we thought we had to do it for staff, and he said no. We do it for parents. There's no. a certain object in the bu budget that's um, for just parents in lieu of transportation. Oh. So, well, and, and that's, that's what our district said. Don't have employees at the top. Yeah, right? that's and that's right. that's what he said it. He said that is kind of you can totally do it for parents. And he said that's the best way to do it. So, okay. okay. Huh. I know. You know, I, have, I feel like, even though we've dealt with the same auditor for, for, for a long time, Ever. I do feel like things change. I don't think that we were always told that. I think there have been times in years past where we were told that parents couldn't do the mileage rate. But whatever, that's what he's saying now. Huh? It is. <laughs> okay, uh, Bianca, any uh, comment, questions? No, thank you. Thank you, all right, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the auditor's report for NUSCS. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Bianca? Aye. Rosemary? Aye. And I also approve. What's that? You don't have to. Thank you. Motion carries. All right, now we're back on track. Uh, six uh, reports, 6.1 uh, enrollment and attendance report. Um, let's see what's listed um, in our board packet. Any comment, Ms. Terry? I don't think so. I, we, you know, updated it from prior months. And so that's a, uh, looking at both Humboldt and Siskiyou, we have 547 students. Mm -hmm. Good job. Right. Uh, moving on, uh, 6.2, financial report for Northern United Humboldt and Northern United Siskiyou charter schools. Any? I do think the Siskiyou one was a little later to come. Like, I, I don't know if, like, maybe the author that might have been emailed to you after the fact. Okay, that was one of the that. things that, yeah, you know, there were a couple of things that we didn't have like a week ago. Um, any uh, comment or questions? I don't have any. Okay. Um, 6.3, LCAP report. <laughs> and I had asked Lily if she would give it and I wasn't here, right. so we just looked at each other like, are you going to give it? I was just going to say what I always say, that this is an opportunity for any member of the public or any staff member to give any input on the LCAP. Um, so if anybody has anything that they, or any board member, 
If anybody has anything that they want to say, this is an opportunity. That's why I have this as a standing item on the board agenda. Um, but just to, to give just a little quick update about what's going on right now is it's time for the annual update. So that's something that we're starting to work on now. And you may remember what the annual update is, is looking at our data and comparing it to what we set as our goals in our LCAP. So for example, I'm just gonna make up some numbers. Let's just say in our LCAP, we said we wanted our attendance rate to be 95%. So now we need to look and see what our attendance rate is and see how we're comparing to that goal that we set. Um, so that's kind of what the annual update is all about. And because it happens so early in the year, we're really looking at data kind of a year behind all the time. Because for example, we can't tell you what our graduation rate is right now because we don't have graduation yet. So we're having to look at what last year's graduation rate was and then compare that to what we said we were, you know, the one from the previous year. So um, because this is only our second year of operation, some of that stuff, you know, we don't really have a comparison on yet. We only have one year's worth of data like graduation rate, for example. Um, but anyway, that's the process that we're doing right now is the annual update. Do you have anything you want to add, Julie? No, not really. Again, it's a process. <laughs> so we're going through the process right now. We are um, looking at um, stakeholder meetings, um, making sure that everybody has input, you know, into the process as well. Um, so, yeah, Sherry, you pretty much covered it. It's the season to be jolly. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank okay, you. Okay, I have one thing to say. Okay. Oh, there you go. Um, this is Sarah from Willow Creek. I just wanted to say thank you to Julie for making the LCAP so organized and easy for us. I know in the years past, uh, last year she really made it so that it felt really clear and understandable to me what we were expected to do and report on. So I know I've thanked her before in emails, but this seemed like an excellent opportunity to say thank you to Julie for really taking that and making it um, understandable. Thank you so much, okay. Sarah. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, any other comment out there about the LCAP? All right. 6.4, the director's report. Okay, boy. I don't have a ton of things to report today, but one of the uh, most exciting things that happened this week, the most positive um, news that we've gotten is, you guys remember for the grant, Humble was selected to have a desk review, like basically like an audit, and it was a big oh, yeah. that we had to submit. Well, um, our desk review technically is January 13th, the week, so next week. So we had to have everything submitted and uploaded like a month ago. Um, and then they would take the week of January 13th to look through it and get back to us and ask if there was anything, you know, ask for questions or whatever. Well, I got an email earlier this week from the state saying that they're ahead of schedule and so they were able to do our review already and they had zero findings, zero Yay! Questions. That's awesome! Uh, <laughs> it looks like the best letter. And um, <laughs> the nice thing about the letter is um, she sees Chris Hartley. Yes. Yeah. 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 I know, and so I really, really can't say enough um, praise about Lacey because she took this project um, on, and she's the one that gathered all of the information, uploaded everything. She has it all together. So as soon as I got that letter, you know, I, I gave it to her and gave her a big high five, um, and she has it all organized and. Um, Kept, you know, she has it all put together in, in case this student gets pulled. Oh, you know, which yeah. can still happen. You know, that can yeah. happen next year. No. Not that it would be the same pieces of paper, but at least, you know, it would be a good guy. Exactly. Sure. She's already invented the wheel. Yeah. 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 So I wanted to share that with you guys. And then. Um, that goes really well for things yet to. Yeah. Yeah. Down the road. I know. All that's, I know. It's that's, nice to find this little positive seat. Right. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Yeah. Okay. And then the other thing, I think this was in your packet. Just mm -hmm. we just include the super student, yeah. and um, then there was something in the North Coast Journal as well. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you guys saw that or not. I thought I'd give you just in case, but. Um, 
Uh, let's see. The other big thing that is that I just want to keep you two other things that I wanted to keep you up to date on. Um, one is the application to become what's called a SFA, a school food authority. So you guys may remember that this is a long multi-step process. The first phase we passed through already and we're on to the second phase and that piece is all due on January 17th. Some of it is to be emailed to the state, some of it is to be all put on a USB and mailed to them, and some of it is hard copy glued signature pages that, is, that are mailed to Sacramento. So um, all the things that need to be emailed, I've already given, that's already been done, and the things that need to be mailed, that will be done next week um, in time to be there by the 17th. But it is a pretty uh, intensive process. Um, and I think I've said this before, but I'm just going to have to say it again. I don't know how anyone would be able to do this and get it approved if they had not, like, you know, a startup charter, had they not had previous experience with the cafeteria program. Because the things that we have to submit, for example, something that Lynn and I have been working on is your meal collection or your uh, money collection procedures and your meal count procedures and menus and nutritional analysis and you know, those kinds of things that, you know, if we had applied before we had started doing any meals at all, I don't know what we would use for a menu. You know, what would we, I don't know how people would be able to do this really, but um, anyway, so we're working our way through it. I'd say we probably are, I don't know, 95% done with the application. Um, I've had lots of phone calls into our person at the state uh, to answer questions as we've been going. But that will definitely, um, that's been taking up a lot of my time and it will continue to be a big part of my focus for next week. So just want to give you an update on that and hopefully the next month, um, you know, like at our February board meeting, um, I may have, you know, an update <laughs> at that point, maybe they'll have reviewed it and let us know. Um, and then the final thing, well, I don't know if it's the final thing, but another thing I wanted to talk about was just a quick facility update. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Still zero feedback from um, the Faith Center. Um, and again, reaching out to them with no response. There, I went and looked at another location as well. Was um, that the Henderson Street one? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I did. And, um, you know, I just, I just don't think it's going to work. I can keep pursuing it, but I'll tell you, it, it, I can tell it's just going to be too small. Mm -hmm. And Kirk just gave me some really good advice. I was telling him this. He said, if you think it's too small now, it's yeah, it's really you're good. there and the kids, you're really going to think. But what it is, is there's, it's, it's nice. It's a nice facility in that it's all fully fenced. And there's four like rooms in a row, one of which is an office and then three classrooms. So all right in a row. And then the church building itself. So, and the church building itself isn't huge. So that church building would have to be divided up into several classrooms as well as like some sort of multi-purpose mm -hmm. space. But the biggest, and that's a big downside, but another big downside is there's no parking lot. It's, it would only be street parking on Henderson. So drop off and pick up, I think, would be a nightmare. Nightmare. Um, there's an alley that runs behind it, and then there's streets on either side, and then on Henderson. It's just, you know, I feel like it's just not ideal. Is there like, ample room for a playground? There is. Oh, there wow. is. I mean, I, you depends on what you mean by ample. You know, it's not, there's no big field, yeah. but there's a nice courtyard mm -hmm. that could have a good, like, playground structure. Yeah. yeah. Terry, can I say something? Yeah. Um, I just want to ask the question, if I'm not mistaken, the um, youth pastor uh, faith center, the lady that we saw and yeah. met with, yeah. doesn't she have a student with Rebecca? She does. And I and I've been white. You know, Rebecca's been out. Yeah. So yeah, Rebecca needs been. to. I mean, she already yes. reached out. To no, and I but she needs to reach out to her directly because the board, if I'm not mistaken, I remember when we met with them, the board, their board of directors are going to meet in February. Right. 
Exactly. And, and we have a lot of issues to work out before this. Exactly. And so the fact that she's not responding to me is, you know, okay. pretty worries. But yes, I want to talk to Rebecca to see if she can if she can have reach out to her uh, you know, yeah. privately, whatever, and yeah. get going on that to see because that space is outstanding. I mean it's outstanding as far as place. Yeah. yeah. Huge. Yeah, well, I'm concerned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The because, part is taking. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, and uh, I know from experience, the springtime is so filled with different things going on. And, um, you know, we haven't heard um, Rosemary and I have yet to do a tour mm -hmm. of this. Um, um, you know, there's this, you know, cliche of uh, sight unseen, you know, I can't imagine. While well, I respect everybody's opinion, approving something that I have not had the opportunity to uh, see. Um, you know, after all, I do have a wee bit of experience with buildings and layouts and classrooms and you know, all those kinds of things. So, <laughs> see it through my eyes. Well, um, and you can, and, and I am. I, they're not going to meet until sometime in February, and then you are getting down to March, and it's like, oh my gosh. Well, and you may remember the plan beforehand was for you guys to go, and we were going to meet with their um, maintenance person, yeah. if, for lack of a better word, the person that had like knows that facility right. inside, not to be able to talk about some of the things right. that we would be able to do in there. And then, of course, I have to go to the county. Oh, yeah. You know, I already went to HCOE about it. Yeah. Um, but to the county in terms of like the zoning right. and the e occupancy, yeah, the e occupancy was the big piece, and um, we haven't been able to move on any of that. So that's you know, that is it is getting worrisome with that. Um, so anyway, that's that was my report on, on the facilities at this point. Okay, um, were, were you just talking about the, the same space, or did you transition to talking about a different space? Uh, we transitioned to talking about uh, a different space, one that um, um, folks had their eye on back in the fall. Uh, not not uh, the latest one, which um, your comment about, if you think it looks small, wait till you get the students there and then see how small it is. Well, and it just occurred to me about that space too that if there's no parking, I'd be surprised if you could get a use permit. Um, like yeah. in Mount Shasta, we, we have to have off street parking. Yeah, yeah, a good point. Good point. Yeah, um, good to uh, bring those things up. Yeah, the, the last thing I wanted to say, and this may be something that um, you, you might want me to wait till we get down to like whatever the, the item before adjournment for the calendar, but. Next month, you know, I mentioned maybe having a report for the cafeteria or the SFA thing next month, but next month I just want to kind of put a bug in your ear, and I hate to do this after having been late today, but my daughter's due mm -hmm. the same week or, you know, right at the same time, and um, I have every intention of being there when she has the baby. So I don't know if you guys want to have a conversation about the next board meeting, like what you want to do. like. I mean, in my opinion, you guys could move forward without me and have the meeting. Um, and I would be totally fine with that and we wouldn't have to change dates no matter what happened. Um, but if you wanted to consider changing the date, you know, my fear is, let's say we say the third month, week in February, whatever, just to try to get as far away from, you know, past for the date as possible. What if, you know, we changed it for no reason or we changed it and it, you know, um, so I just kind of wanted to just put that out there, but we can talk about it when we get down to the later if you wanted to. You know, the one that's um, okay. We have the next meeting. Okay. Later. Yeah. Let's let's uh, wait until we get to um, future board. When are you leaving? I, I don't know. I'm gonna wait till she calls me. I'm gonna wait till she's in labor. <coughs> 
You're driving to Tennessee? No, she lives in Oregon. Oh, that's right. That's right. Come on. Oh, my in laws. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, okay. She got to drive really fast. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. You're also. <laughs> okay, and that's all. That's it for my report. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Sherry. Um, um, Northern United Humble Charter School report. Um, I believe that Rebecca did the reports this month and put them in the packet. Um, it was her month to do it. But not in my packet. But here's the deal. Um, I was going to say it may not have gotten sent to you because of babies and stuff. So I've done it for the last two months. But I did an excellent job. And thank you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just give a brief report. Um, I'm going to give a brief report in regards to um, the last couple of months. Uh, we've been having IST meetings specifically with ISTs, which has been really, really amazing and wonderful and sharing um, some best practices along with sharing um, information regarding testing and different things. I just want to bring up um, the one thing that I'm seeing that is so fabulous is the um, percentage of our students who are being tested. Um, we noticed this last time that we talked in our IST meeting and Rita was with us, and our percentage, you know, we always need to, you know, when you're talking smart and balance, we need to, you know, 95% or whatever. But what we're seeing with our in-school um, testing, our renaissance, is that the kids are getting tested, and we're seeing results, and the, um, the intervention process that we've really instituted this year with IXL and different, um, you know, different, interventions are really working. We're starting to see kids really improve. So uh, the discussion that took place, I believe it was last month, was that we've seen that so many of the kids that were in the red um, with just six weeks of the interventions that are happening, we're already seeing kids moving into the yellow, um, which is, is good. So we're seeing results. We're beginning to see results. So. I think my big takeaway from the IST meetings has been I'm just super proud of our ISTs. I'm seeing them work really, really hard in getting their kids tested, figuring out how to do that, figuring out how to get the supplement mandated supplemental materials to their families that they have to do, which is much easier for those of us who are centers. So anyway. I'm, ex I'm really proud of them. I'm really proud of them, and I'm proud of the results that I'm seeing in um, our math scores and our ELA scores. As far as in the Renaissance area, let's see what we'll see what Smart Alex says. But. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Yaki, do you have any questions or? No, thank you. Thanks, Julie. Good. All right, 6-6, um, six, six, Northern United Siski Charter School Report, and we can see uh, yeah. what was submitted, and great pictures, and uh, in the information. Um, Kurt, do you want to say anything in addition to this submission, or? I don't really have anything else to add. There's really not been much school happening between the last okay. board meeting. In this board meeting, I will say though that you know I don't have the numbers right at my fingertips, but I think that our teachers in Siskiyou have been doing a really good job about getting um, most of their students to complete the Star Renaissance testing as well. Um, you know, that's the only thing I have to add. Okay, good. I I do have one question for you. Yes. Um, the fundraisers. Uh, Particip you're participating in Northbound Coffee Roasters. Yes. Do you want to buy and, some coffee? And uh, <laughs> what's um, uh, any possibility you're going to bring some to Humboldt? Because there certainly are could make that, certainly there could are make that happen. Drinkers. There are coffee drinkers here. There are coffee drinkers in this room who might, 
you know, help out with that fundraiser. Once you Colleen know, gets the, of course. <laughs> once Colleen gets the order forms all together, I'll send some your way, and uh, then we can. Once we receive all the orders, we can certainly figure out a way to get get them over across the hill there. All right, very good. I think I coffee's a great fundraiser yeah. because, <laughs> you know, if you drink coffee, you're gonna buy it anyway, and we're really only charging, well, depending on what store you purchase this particular company's coffee, it's either virtually the same or less. maybe a dollar more or a little bit less, mm -hmm. so. And we make we, we sell it for twelve, and they charge I think six seventy five to us. Sure, well, good. I just heard from Yeah. Anyway, thank you, Kurt. Welcome. All thank right. you. Uh, on to six seven board report. So, Miss Bianca, do you have anything to tell us about? Um. Not, no, not really. I guess this would be the appropriate time to ask questions that are not on the agenda and that haven't been covered by the different reports. Um, I'm curious, how many facilities are we streaming at today? I, like I see, you know, on my board, I see at least two additional ones. Does that mean that we're streaming at two additional ones, or are there more? There were more. Um, there were more. Having not been here from the beginning, I'm not sure, but we got, do you know Linda? Linda knows, she's keeping, tra she kept track of it. So we had Peter Harrison zoom in from Griceland, and of course Kirk and Lindsay Miller from Mount Shasta, Wairika, respectively. Sarah Thompson from Willow Creek, and Heather Charlotte from Redway. Awesome. Cool. Is it appropriate? And Mary to was it? on. Who? Mary. Oh, Mary Havens. Oh, so Arcana was okay. represented too. Is, is it appropriate when we start, if if others are there, is it to let us know who and where, even though it, it's there in, mm -hmm. in very small shrimp? Do you do that? Yeah, let's, um, I'll just <coughs> acknowledge them. Yeah, I'll have to make a note uh, now that it's going to be standard on the uh, Do a certain acknowledgement, you know, right at the beginning. Uh, that's a, yeah, I'll try to And then once you do, do, then it become uh, second nature. So th thanks for asking about that, Bianca. Yeah. Yeah, and just so you know, what I did is I sent an email out to like kind of the lead yeah. center and said, you know, this is what we're going to be doing, and it's kind of up to you how like you if it's the same person who does it every time, or if you guys as a staff want to rotate it out so you're not always having to do it. You know, I said to keep in mind things like if it's someone who's paid hourly that they need to put it on their time sheet and you pay for it, and if they've already been there eight hours, then it's going to be overtime. So to keep things like that in mind. Yeah. People who are salaried, it's just part of their additional duties, you know. Um, so, and I was thrilled with the response. I have to tell you, I was, everybody came back so quickly saying, like, oh, I'll do it, or, you know, we'll do it. I, I heard back from every center about it really quickly um, without, like, any pushback. I was surprised by that, um, but really, really pleased. Um, now, I, I do have to say, I don't know. Um, I did say that if nobody came by the time you were through like public comments and stuff, right. you know, you your hands, right? I mean, <coughs> sometimes it can be pretty long. So that's true. Although we were, so I know we're doing well. We're doing yeah. very well, and yeah. and we would have uh, shaved even more time off if I was not. <laughs> we had some issues in the beginning setting all this up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Go a little slow. So it feels high for me. I have another question. Go on. Uh, anything else, Bianca? Um, I'm curious, Sherry, if there was any response from legal from YMNC if, um, regarding the cannabis policy, if they had replied back to you. I know last month you said oh, that. No, no uh, policy, no template policy yet. <clears throat> 
other than a response saying, yes, we'll get one to you. Huh. We talked to them, I don't know, I'm going to say three times since then. Okay. So they're going to get a template, essentially, going to make one. They're going to send us their a sample policy, right? I'll reach out again. Okay. I'll do a nudge. Okay. Anything else? Um, I have some notes. That's on the agenda. No. No, I'll wait for next possible items for next meeting. I guess the only other thing I'm curious about, have there been any bites on a board member from anybody? Well, you might remember, you know, we had the person that reached out to us and I gave her the application, remember? And we were wondering if it was like too much. And so I reached out again and I said, hey, just wondering if you're still interested. And she said, yeah, thank you for reaching out again. I am still interested. And I said, I know the application is you know, pretty daunting. So if you have any questions or need any help, and she said, um, okay, you know, I appreciate that. She said, I'm just trying to figure out if I would really um, have anything to offer or something like that. And I said, I'm sure you would. I have no doubt you would have something to offer. And, um, you know, if you, if you want to talk to me about it, if you, you know, if you need any help filling out forms, if you, you know, if there's parts of it you don't want to fill out, you know, just reach out to me. And that was the last. Kirk, did you ever get to talk to her in person? Who? I know, we have holidays too. Who's that? I'm scrolling my emails to find it. Here it is, okay. Natalie. It was uh, right. Natalie Quinn. No, I, I have not had a chance to talk to her. And Natalie Quinn is the one that was interested. <laughs> Yeah, yes. I forgot about her. I'll pick up with her um, next time I'm in Wairika. Okay, sounds good. So she is Wairika. Okay. Yes. Yeah, her son, her her stepson Justin, is a high school student there, who's you know, like going to be the next Doogie Hauser or something. <laughs> That's what you you told me about him. Okay. Well, we <coughs> there was yeah, you know. Anything else? Anything further? No, not for me. Okay. Thank you. No? No? No, well, I've heard Sam. We just came yeah. back. We've been gone. Mm -hmm. Well. I have nothing, honey. <laughs> okay. Um, I, like uh, Bianca, have some questions. Um, Warm 700? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. But not until March. Yeah, not until March. Not until March or right. mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, I was jumping the gun. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just yep. And when I called the elections office, they said, nope, not yet. And um, Tammy, are there any uh, changes coming down the road? Um, medical costs? That you're aware of. An increase for medical when it comes um, May, in which May, it'll be effective okay. July 1st. Okay. But that's that's common. Yeah, I, I sit on that board and we, we vote on what the increase okay. will be of May. Well, because is. for people like me, you know, old people like me, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, the, the Medicare. Uh, Costs are changing, so um, I was just curious if it starts there, it's got to filter down well, somewhere. Well, the, the nice thing about it is we have a cap, so right. for our, you know, our so it's locked in for the school. Yeah, but yeah. uh, the our cap is locked in for the Yeah, but as yeah. far as the yeah. yeah. okay, it increases for tourism. But I will tell you that. Um, on that board, on the JPA board, we've had a lot of discussions the last couple of meetings about the increased cost. And, you know, not only is it very expensive for all of us to, you know, pay for the medical, um, but the program itself, the JPA that is, that runs 
the um, insurance is in the red. So it's extremely concerning. Every year we're having to borrow from the dental program. The dental program always runs in the black. And so every year we've been borrowing from the dental program and um, then paying it back when we can. And <laughs> that's why we keep increasing the rates is to try to get us out of being in the red. And so because of that, we've had a lot of discussions about, you know, maybe this is not the way to go. Maybe, you know, we, I mean, we're trying to think outside the box. We're talking about hiring our own doctors. We're talking about, you know, looking at, at just looking at it differently rather than just the Blue Cross or the Blue Shield options that the JPA has done for the last, you know, however many years, almost 30 years you have. So, um, you know, we'll, I think that um, another option has, we've talked about it on the board is, um, the idea of doing an a la carte plan. Like right now, we offer a lot of really what's considered Cadillac plans. And um, the idea of maybe having a very basic plan for kind of everybody, and anyone who wants more than that has to pay kind of on their own outside of the JP, like buy additional packages kind of to to supplement. Boost to supplement it kind of. I mean, still with the same, like still with Blue Cross, so I'm running about a half lap or something like that, but, um, you know, do just maybe really just taking a hard look at the plans we offer even and see if we want to completely change that. So there's a lot of conversation right now thinking outside the box. And part of what's driving that, not only is it the high cost, of course, but um, the director of the JPA for quite a few years had been Stacey Lane. And she um, is no longer there. Um, she's, she doesn't hold that position anymore. And so we interviewed for a new person. And you might remember I sat on that interview panel. And so the person that we ended up hiring, Taylor Titus, um, uh, we, we a, a lot, you know, a big part of the interview process was talking about thinking outside the box. And as she has come in and started kind of going through things, it turns out there were a lot of things that we could have been doing that we weren't doing. Um, and for example, we always had our risk manager. It was, um, what was her name? Kimberly, Kimberly Comet. Kimberly Comet. Kimberly Comet. And it was Taylor Titus. Well, once Taylor got into this position, she found out that we actually don't need to have our risk manager because that's something Keenan, we are already are paying for through Keenan to operate as our risk manager. So we've been employing this a position that we didn't need to employ. Oops. Um, <laughs> and so that's just one of the kinds of things that having a new person at the head, mm. you yeah. know, is kind yeah. of bringing out. Right. 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 And so, you know, I'm, we're kind of hoping that it's not going to be just like status quo, we're gonna, but you know, we're, unless that's the right option. Right. Okay. But anyway, we're, we're that's what that's kind of what the um, the main focus of our meetings are right now. Okay. Uh, leading up to you know that may rate the may rate setting is meeting you know all the time. Right. Okay. Good. Uh, and one last thing, uh, <laughs> one of the best quotes. I've come across in a long time came from our own uh, Miss Bianca. Pleasure shouldn't be guilty. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And with that, um, I'll move on. <laughs> we move on to discussion items. Uh, seven one discussion of wellness policy for three. So that's in your packet and it's the first reading so you have an opportunity to look over it and see if there's anything in there that you would recommend changing if you see any typos if you have any questions or concerns about it let me know so i can make those updates before the next meeting when we have a second reading um are you you know it's anticipating that this is going to be approved and move forward are you looking at having some committee forming a wellness committee, <laughs> or are you wanting to? Because you know, there's lots of reference of I know. you or this. I know. I know. So, I know. I know. So, I know. like, dang, I know. you've been in a similar position. Just 
like one more thing on your plate. I know. And you know what? Desert tea. Really left early. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what happens. Surprise! <laughs> well, and then. <laughs> Am I writing that in the Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's it's recording. <laughs> yes. It, with with the, a wellness committee or wellness council is formed, I don't think I'll sit on that council. You know, I think the things will go through them first. Yeah. And I think it's always a good idea to have layers like that because then if there's a dispute or disagreements, there's somebody else to go to about it. Yeah. So that's that's the way that that would happen. Good plan. And then um, just seeing this policy, there are quite a few on deck that you'll have as first readings in the next. Uh, Bianca, do you have any comments, uh, things um, you'd like to say about the wellness policy? Yeah, well, there's a couple typos. I guess those are easy things to start off with. Um, page two, paragraph five. It says, let's see here, page two, one, two, three, four, five. Um, two schools. Yeah. Yep. See, and I interpreted that as all our facilities. Yes, because uh, so at the very beginning, it says that we are I going to be schools. Yeah, school. Yep. And uh, that's how I interpreted yeah. that when I read them. Yeah. I'm going to just change that second school to facilities or learning centers. Or yeah. Like yeah. And you know why this is? Is because I take a CSDA policy every place that says district, I change it to school. Uh -huh. right? And uh -huh. so sometimes it, there's a mess yeah. like that. And and under notifications, the first sentence, um, it's a long one. The word two is missing. Let's see. The policy and any updates to the policy available yeah. to the public. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and then my feedback on it. Uh, what it what it spurred me to think was two things. One, um, perhaps in April we could send out a survey about our current food program as it relates to health and uh, to to everybody, right? So it's in my opinion anyway, perhaps to students and to faculty and staff, and then also perhaps to parents if that's feasible to start to gain markers, just a thought is what this spurred it, what this spurred to me, you know? Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that it made me think about while reading through it was liability. Um, I'll read you a quote here. It says, the board may enter into a, a joint use agreement and memorandum of understanding to make school facilities or grounds available for recreational or sports activities outside the school day and or to use community facilities to expand students' access to opportunity for physical activity. So my understanding of um, liability laws with public schools is that as long as it's after school hours, if any member of the public were to use a playground of ours, we would not be held liable. We would likely not be held liable because it's after school hours. But there are things that we can do to mitigate that, such as putting up signs and putting up fencing. and I've witnessed members of the public, not students, using the playground at the Pine Grove Learning Center after hours. Um, so I guess for me, this just, you know, I wanna make sure that if we do go into any type of agreements, that we always think about liability. Um, and maybe perhaps this is a moment to reflect on the fact that we don't have any signs at the program, at the Pine Grove location that, you know, um, release us from liability. Again, my understanding and my very shallow research is that we would not likely be held liable after school hours. But I, you know, I see no harm in putting up more barriers, not physically, but again, maybe a sign. So that was my takeaway. And then, oh, I did have a question. Um, last month, let me see if I have my note here. Last month, Sherry, you mentioned that, you know, we wanted to look at this because um, it impedes upon students' ability to learn sometimes in, relate, in regards to a physical education policy. Is there anything in here that you can speak to on that? 
quite follow that. Can so you me, say it again? Yeah, I'm going to pull up my notes from last month so that I can better iterate it. Um, you said that the physical education policy, that sometimes there tends to be a problem, especially for the A to G students, it's a time constraint issue, is what you said last month? Yes. Do you recall, do you recall that? Yes, now I know what you're talking about, yeah. Mm -hmm. So does this policy, and perhaps it's because I'm, I'm not as familiar, does this policy address that time constraint is, issue? No, that's something kind of totally different. Yeah, okay. this one, policy was different than that. What that was is a kind of a, it's, that's a, like a graduation requirement that we have, that if a high school student doesn't pass a physical fitness test as a ninth grader, they have to continue to take PE every year. And that has made it difficult for those who are wanting to take A through G coursework um, because they don't have enough time in their schedule. So that's uh, not really a, it's not really a policy at all. It's a graduation requirement that we have had that I'm considering doing away with for next year. And so I just brought it up last month to kind of start the, the thought process to let you know that we're thinking about it. Um, and this was brought up to me by high school teachers and um, their experiences with having kids continue to have to take PE um, and how it can get in the way of their schedule. So um, that, would, that would be something to, you know, completely separate from this wellness policy. Got it, okay. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, I was skimming through it and like trying to put the pieces together and- Yeah, I totally just... forgot about that, thank you. Nope, thank you. So that's what I have in regards to this policy. Well, very good, thank you. Always in my team. Rosemary? I think. Neither do I, other than my first job is on the committee. I know. That's my first job. Okay, well. Well, but you do see, though, that the whole committee thing says May. May. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. All right. Um, moving on to eight, next board meeting. So A1 is um, hospital agenda items. We see listed here parent involvement policy uh, and compact. And the wellness policy, which uh, this previous one we've just covered would be the second reading and um, the school accountability report cards. Correct. Mm -hmm. Else? We talked about the food service follow-up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's the more of that? Okay. Yeah. See if... Um, Definitely will be a facilities update yeah. as well. Yeah. See if the answer is still coming. Um, Make sure this is the five charts. Well, she, I can see it in the email that Julie sent her already, and then when I was walking in, I heard her talking about it. We had a lot of fun with that. Uh, did you have any things? Yeah. Uh, looking through the handbook, I noticed there was nothing in the board evaluation portion. So I thought perhaps next week we could, excuse me, next month we could discuss what that process is. What is that process? What is our policy? I think it's really great to have checks and balances. Well, and I, you know, I would recommend that you guys do just some research on other examples of board evaluations, you know, self-evaluations, and then maybe you could just bring in, you know, share them with each other. Okay. Or we might want to say that for a work session or something, because that might be something that you would all want to look at at the same time. I don't know. Or if you guys want to, because I'm just, just trying to think, okay, how do we do that with the Brown Act? Maybe you could find an example of one, send it to me, and then I'll send it out to everybody. Okay. 
Well, I think that's probably the safest way to handle it. Yeah. In advance mm -hmm. right. versus next month exactly. up with these examples. And right. We may confidently you know that I know. It, it doesn't work. I know. Because I can't handle it. Yeah. It doesn't it all well. together. Right. Well, so if you, if you find one, send it to me and I'll send it out to everybody before the meeting. And then you guys could review them. And then when we get together, you know, at the meeting, then you guys can talk about what you like to, what things you like to didn't like about each one or whatever. You can try to build something, start on it anyway. Okay. Are there yeah. are there other ways? Are there other ways of evaluating school board members from your experience, Sherry, other than self evaluations? Self evaluation is the one that I've always seen. That's that's what like CSBA recommends is a self evaluation. Um, and what I have seen, the CSBA template is that everybody kind of judges them, their own self against it. You know, like they rate themselves and their own first, you know, performance based on the indicators that CSBA gives you. And then um, there's a section to do the board as a whole as well. Um, you know, I mean, in terms of evaluations that I've seen, this isn't specific to school boards, but sometimes administrators have three, so what's called 360 evaluations, which means uh, not only does their supervisor evaluate them, but they also have staff evaluate them. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of getting, and parents, you know, they're kind of getting feedback yeah. from all sides. And so, I mean, the board could do a 360 if they wanted to as well. Um, uh, I, you know, but I, but definitely the self evaluation is what I've seen uh, most frequently. I think it would be nice to get feedback from other folks uh, as far as what they're they're thinking that we're doing. We? Oh job, sure, Ab job, but, sure, absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, uh, in our search, um, you know, we can. Uh, expand it to to look for a form or questionnaire that uh, solicits uh, input from um, the rest of our officers and to the staff and if there are any uh, <coughs> parent uh, you know community uh, member input um, to the uh, collectively the board or individual board members. Sure. You know, in thinking about it, I think probably the reason why CSBA doesn't usually do uh, kind of like a more 360 approach would be you're voted in by the public. Yeah. And so that is your evaluation. Yeah. That's you know true. what I mean? People vote with how the job they think you're doing. If you're doing a good job, you get voted out. You know, or a bad job, you get voted out. You know, and so I think that's that may be why they wouldn't normally do that. That's you true. Know? So I we have to search for that because yeah. well, you can always create something. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. We can mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. just we serve the five. Mm -hmm. so. But. Ruthie Bay, uh, yeah, she got a Queen Bill of Health. Yeah, and, yeah. and what is she, 103? So we got a long ways to go. Speak for yourself. <laughs> she got 103. Yeah. Um, like okay. Um, anything else on that? Uh, thoughts? Bianca? No, no other items. Okay. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. Um, um, uh, you know, now's the time to you know start thinking about that mm -hmm. and, and reflect um, backward, and then also uh, moving forward. So very good. Um, Eight point two next board meeting date uh, February thirteenth, day before, the day after Valentine. Four, 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 yeah, four, 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 four,
It's your first? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know. That's I mean, why what do I know? Is, we we do know. know that. We can't um, predict. And so I just kind of wanted to bring it up now with the thought. I mean, you went to baby do it? Her due date is February 3rd. Oh, third. Mm -hmm. They say two weeks before and two weeks after is considered right. Exactly. So two weeks before and two weeks after is considered full term normal. So that's I'm just putting it out there. You know, that's why I said well, we could move it to the next Thursday, and then I'd probably be sick. And she probably isn't going to go that far past her due date. But you hope not. Yeah. So um, I don't know what you want to do. Do you want to just wait till we get a little closer and decide? Well, here's uh, here's a possibility for us to consider. I mean, uh, a couple of things. Well, one, obviously, yes, we can uh, change the date. You know, outside the window period. Mm -hmm. Or two, um, I, I think both of you know that. Sherry and I uh, talk a lot, and so um, we, we can be in communication and once see what the agenda actually is, and then um, know from her, although there's no replacement knowledge that I can speak to mm -hmm. that's superior to having Sherry here in person, but you know, an option would be that um, we would communicate, and then I would find out uh, a specific background right. Uh, right. material beyond what mm -hmm. you know was posted, and be knowledgeable of that. Uh, you know, in my capacity as president of the board. Now, if we wait a week, that's President's Week. The week after that, is it? Uh huh. And so, um, so that wouldn't work. That wouldn't yeah. work. To you know, something it. else to you know, I told you I emailed out everybody about zooming in. Uh -huh. You know, uh -huh. everyone at the centers. One of the questions I got um, back was, how often do you? She said, I know that in the past you've changed meetings, right? Some days, you know, and how often do you do that? Because you know, if it's the set schedule, we can plan on that. Mm -hmm. But when it's moved, that sometimes can make it a little more dicey. And, you know, I thought she made a good point. And so um, I don't know if now that we're having people zoom in, if we just really want to try to avoid moving them. You know, well, I don't know. Even thought about yeah, us. I know. Well, it impacts more than just us. Right. Well, uh, you and I, uh, gosh, uh, when, when was this? Um, in the fall, I, uh, I don't know if I still have the email or, or text messages, but looking ahead to setting a new calendar, right. avoiding, exactly. you know, looking at what That's we had in the last year, so we moved it up because it avoids First presidents being up, you know, and we're uh, enough ahead of, and so that's a valid point. I know. And, but, uh, what in my mind was missing in that discussion was, oh, after the first year, I know all of these. So, um, I, you know, as much as I uh, prefer to have Sherry here all the time, um, with looking at the big picture, all you know, the dynamic. That's at work. That's that right. We should just go ahead and mm -hmm. keep and it. And the fact that there was that question, I know that came up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree, and it's you know, no one should do on the third. It's possible that I would be here anyway, but we, you know, I just feel like we now have enough heads up that you know we could start working on the agenda early we could start you know really communicating right. so that by the time it comes you'll you know you won't even you won't even notice that we and we can always table an item if it if it comes to that right good point yeah yeah, point. yeah absolutely you know if there's something that um i can't uh answer or, or articulate uh sufficiently we can mm -hmm. easily easily yeah. table it but 
um, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see because yeah. there's there have been occasions in the past that um, Sherry's reached out to me, you know, giving me heads up, something's you know, on the horizon, mm -hmm. we've um, talked it out on the phone, or it turns out that I came in to her office and mm -hmm. we went over this. So um, I say we just leave it as it is mm -hmm. and um, take it. Um, Okay, from that. Mm -hmm. Hey, Sherry, you zoom in as a guest? Well, basically, basically we had agendized it ahead of time, and if it was in a public place, and we hung the agenda in that public place for 72 hours in advance. So, <laughs> I don't know where I, what I, you know, I don't know where I would do that. The hospital. Okay. okay. Anything further? Um, all right. Um, if there's nothing further, I will adjourn this meeting at 6.02. And we have a lot of stuff to sign. Okay. Oh.